here you are for another episode of Paul's Garage. So today I'm going to be doing the upper and lower bowl joints on my wife's 2003 Dodge Durango. Uh, some of the tools you're going to be needing. Pickle forks. You're going to need some pickle forks here uh, in order to bust the ball joints loose and I'll show you as I'm using those in there too. Uh, other items you're probably going to want to be sure and have on hand are going to be a nice large uh, breaker bar in order to uh, you know break some of the hard stuff loose like getting the the rotors and stuff off also and then of course a full load of sockets and everything and everything of course is metric which I'm not used to using as you can see behind me uh, back here there's the 73 duster that my son and I are putting a 340 in uh, which is setting right there on the engine stand behind me there in the plastic bag right there and then of course all the other goodies here on the bench and then of course there's my my 70 uh, RT Challenger right here but anyhow back to what we're doing so that's what we're going to be starting on today so enough of that and we'll get going all right, here you can see it. To hear the, starting off here, you're going to have to take your uh, brakes off the car. There's two large bolts on the back here that need to be popped off in order to get your uh, brakes off. Uh, going to also have to take off the rotor here, uh, get that out of the way. Uh, so that's kind of a can be kind of a pain, but yeah, once you get it all done, but this isn't too terrible. Get this off. This should pop off. They tend to seize over here a little bit from time to time. Uh, I just did the rear brakes on this actually today, and uh, the drums are kind of a pain in the neck to get off or the, the, the discs here, uh, the rotors. Uh, but other than that, like I say, getting those off shouldn't be too terrible difficult, but sometimes they get stuck because they get rusted on here. And then, of course, the upper ball joints right here this one's been done apparently one time or maybe 2003 it's a little different because i did this on my son's uh, durango also and these were actually riveted on here so i had to drill the rivets out to put the new style uh, ball joint in this one shouldn't be too bad to pop out uh, again the pickle forks uh, depending on what size you got here you can use in that because these uh, the bottom of the ball joints are tapered so when they go into the the steering here it actually is a taper joint so you're going to have to take and pound on the end of that here in order to uh, pop that loose and the, your A-arm should pop up you can remove that and put the new ball joint in so we're going to get started on disassembly now all right just about got this out I got the other one done because there's only two bolts that hold the caliper which I couldn't recall earlier off of here uh, so there we go second one's off I use 13 sixteenths. I think it's equivalent of a 20 millimeter for metric is what it is. Most of the stuff is metric anymore. But then this should just pop right off of that. I'm going to get it put off to the side. I'll get something to set it on so it doesn't put a lot of stress on the uh, brake line. But right for the moment I'm just going to do that and pop that off of there and get it out of the way. So hub looks pretty good. Don't feel any uh, really bad imperfections on it or the uh, rotor here so it uh, doesn't look too bad but we'll check the brakes while we're in here taking it apart anyhow it may get them turned just because and get new pads on while I'm here right underneath here uh, there's the nut on the bottom of the upper ball joint there's a cotter key that's in there that needs to be uh, pulled out of the way of course so need to make sure and get that cotter key bent out of there get some better light here and uh, get this out of here get that. so we'll get the cotter key out and again if you can't do it with your fingers get yourself a pliers and wedge it out and get it out of the, the ball joint that's in there and that'll allow you to get the nut off that's underneath here so there's a nut here All right, we've got the brake calipers off here, and uh, that would came out pretty easy. You usually want something to set it on. So I got a little stool that I just slid underneath here in order to relieve the stress, so you're not putting any stress on the line. Uh, I believe those were uh, 13 sixteenths or metric equivalent of 20 millimeter, I believe, for the for getting the uh, caliper off. And there's two bolts, like I say, here and here. 
kind of a pain in the neck to get in there sometimes uh, because of the depth and stuff. Uh, so now there's a cotter key right behind here that needs to be removed. I've stretched it out already that goes through the bottom of the ball joint and up underneath here. There's a nut holding it in place. Once we get the nut out of place, we'll take a, the appropriate pickle, which everyone's probably going to be tightest, make it around the bolt. Again, beat the heck out of it on the end there and uh, get that underneath there and it'll pop loose from the knuckle and say arm should pop up at that point and then you can just remove those three uh, nuts, pop the uh, top ball joint out and be done with that one. Uh, and then of course I'll keep going until we do the bottom one. Okay, a little noisy right now, but here we go to pop that knuckle off. And that's all there is to it. Got the pickle there, so now it's a matter of moving those four nuts. We'll put the new one in. Don't worry about the boot that's on the bottom here. It really doesn't matter. Uh, you'll get a new one when you get your new uh, ball joint. So, and it typically tears it up. And of course, that will. There's that taper that I was telling you about. So that tapers into this particular uh, portion here. Try and clean this up a little bit. If you need to clean that out a little bit in there, that's probably fine. Uh, I've even put uh, from time to time a little grease in there uh, just for assembly again so it sucks up nice and tight on there and it will stay in place because once the nut is on from the bottom side you run a cotter key through so it's not going to move it just aids in making sure that it's down there nice and tight and a little bit easier to torque it on there and then uh, check with local Dodge Deer or whatever I'm sure they have torque specifications So again, the three nuts here, pretty simple. Just pop mine off up, spin it on the bottom. So I'm going to get a wrench and put it on the other side. Okay, decided to cheat. 16 millimeter head on the bolt below, and it's a 14 on the top. Well, yeah, came off the box end. And one more to go. And there she is, upper ball joints out. It's a not too tough project. Got her out now. Just going to do a little clean up here, just clean it off a little bit. Again, so I think you get just a better connection there when you put the thing back in. So there she is, there's the new one, and it does come with uh, nuts, does come with an additional cotter key in the back of it, so not all of them do, so make sure when you get them, I'd say most of them probably do, but again, grease cert in the top, uh, pretty simple to put back in, bolt it back in and you're ready to go. Of course, I'm not going to connect it to this until later, but I'm going to put all the parts in there, I'll run the key through for now just so I don't misplace it, and then uh, we'll start taking apart the bottom. Okay, got the uh, new ball joint in here, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it in. It did come with new bolts, new nuts, uh, it did come with uh, the actual nut on the bottom here, a new cotter key. Uh, I'm just going to slide that all in there uh, for now, and then of course I'll tighten her up here in a little bit once I get the bottom done. It does come with a new greaser too, so make sure you get that in there. And as like I said, it does come with a new boot on it. so. Uh, when you get it all done, make sure and run a little grease in there again until it starts to kind of squeeze out of the cap a little bit. Make sure it's plenty lube. They do come with a little bit, but I would still, you know, grease it up good. Now the not so fun part is getting the bottom bowl joint out. Down here you can see the top of it and the grease greaser right there. So that's the next thing that's got to come out. Uh, this is a, a snap ring on here. So you'll need a snap ring pliers for removal. Uh, as you can see, let's see if I can get you in there to see it good enough. Uh, right here, so uh, gonna need oh, here snap ring plier to pop that off. But in order to get to it first, we've got to re remove the steering here. We're gonna have to take the the axle apart here and pop the hub and stuff off so we can get to it e easier. 
and get that shaft out of the way so we can get to it. Uh, a little more complicated than the upper, but like I said, once it's done, she'll be in good shape again for probably another 100,000 miles with the engine lasts that long. All right, I got the front part of this torn apart a little bit better. Uh, hopefully you can see in there. There you can see the top of the joint. I didn't end up taking off the steering portion here. I was able to pop the axle back through and be able to get it out of the hub here. Uh, so it really wasn't that much of a pain. I just tapped a little bit from the front with a hammer on the end here. Make sure you don't hit your threads and uh, booger up any of your threads here so when you're pounding it. But no, when I was in there I just tapped it and it pushed out the back. It was kind of a booger to push back against tension here because it's spring loaded. Uh, and then just moved it out of the way. So now I can go ahead and get in there, get the snap ring plier in here, spread that, take that off. And then uh, from the local auto parts store, uh, they actually have a press you can use to get those out of there. So I'm going to take the bottom, the bottom nut off the bottom here uh, and separate that from this. Move this out of the way here. Then I'll use the uh, tool that I've got and I'll show you how that works to get that bottom ball joint out. So again, kind of a pain, it isn't terrible, but I mean, all in all, I've been actually out here half an hour, so not too terrible. A lot better than uh, the quote that I got, which was $700 per side to replace the upper and lower ball joints, where I did it, I think the parts were you know, like 70 or $80 and you know, two hours of time, I just, just can't see myself paying that kind of money for something I can do. All right, what I went ahead and did here is I, I went ahead and put a, a little bottle jack. I don't think you can see it in the video here. I'll see get a little more light on it again. Uh, don't think you see the bottle jack, but I put it underneath the lower control arm here. Essentially jack that up uh, just so I could pop that lower knuckle loose there uh, with the pickle fork. So again just to get it loose so now i've uh, got the bottle jack underneath it again i'm going to jack it up loosen the nut underneath here again let it drop and then i can pull this whole assembly out so let me just do that while the video is running let me make sure i got her tightened up here and i do again just relieve a little pressure off of that so i can get that Push this down in there a little bit, yeah, a little more. Again, because that was just hand tightened for no other reason than to just give myself a little easier to work to get that bottom knuckle off so it wasn't wiggling around on me constantly. I'll of course, use a whole actual wrench on it too. Okay, there we go. Once I got her loose from that, she just kind of fell down after I jacked it up a little more. Like I say, it's, I just left the uh, tie rod end on, so not a big deal. Now I can get to that. Let me get you on there again. I said, now I can get to that, and then uh, we'll continue on with getting that bad boy pulled out of there. Okay, now we're just about ready to pop the thing out of there. We've got the special tool kit here. comes with some separate different sleeves and things like that uh, essentially to go over the bottom of the ball joint what we're going to do is put that underneath like so and then of course it has a, a lot of different uh, adjustments here so essentially that allows for that to push through there okay get the rest of this out of here as you can see like this so that's just going to set down inside of there that fits there like that that goes over the top like that if you hopefully you can see the threads inside there so I put this bad boy in the top now I did take out the grease cert there obviously so it doesn't get hung up on the inside of here so you had to get that out of there too and this ball joint as you can see is just pretty much shot so we'll get this all set up 
and we'll get her put in there and then I'll tighten it up and then we'll continue on. Okay, we're set up now. As you can see, we got her on top here. And what's all it's going to do, we're going to tighten that up and uh, you can feel the, the bottom part of the ball joint in there. And it's still sloppy as mad. Uh, we'll just tighten this up. I'll probably just use my uh, pneumatic on there instead of busting my butt to try and get that out of there. Just hit it and it'll just push it right down into that pocket right there. And then uh, we'll show you how to do it the opposite. Okay, here we go. Going to be a little bit loud. It should push that bottom one out of there. Well, we'll get a little cockeyed there. Don't get your fingers pinched. Okay, hold on. Let's get her lined up a little bit better here. Of course, you got to make sure that you're not going to be pressing on the ball joint on the other side or you're kind of defeating the purpose. So there's not a medium one that'll fit just as perfect as I'd like it to on this particular set, but as long as I can get it to not rest on the old ball joint underneath, you can hit it from the top, it should come out. Still seems to be a little hung up. I'll probably put a little uh, liquid wrench on there, see if I can get it to break some of that rust up a little bit and so it'll punch out the bottom. All right, here you can see it. That's the, the snap ring is below that snap ring groove in there, so. You get the idea. So just keep going until she pops out the bottom side. And eventually it'll look like that. It'll just pop out the bottom. So, at which point you can back your up there. Pull this off. There's the old ball joint. You can see pretty well shot. It's a little crunchy in there. Sorry my compressor's making some noise in the background. But yeah, pretty well shot. So, I mean, it's not necessarily loose, but as in flopping around uh, this way, but it's kind of crunchy in spots and should be a big improvement when we get the new ones pressed in. Essentially, we're going to do the opposite this time. Put the thing on top and we'll literally suck it up from the bottom. And I'll get it set up here in a minute. Okay, here's the new ball joint here. Uh, of course, getting ready to punch her in here. I wiped this out really good. I'll actually put some grease in there to aid and to get pressing the thing back in. Now, this has got to go up over this again here, but as you can see, that rubber boot's kind of impeding its uh, ability to set up against that ring to, to press it back in. So uh, I'm going to take the nut off and I'll pop this boot off, which is pretty easy. And uh, then I'll put the ring on there because obviously it needs to press on that in order to essentially suck it back up inside. So we're really going to do pretty much opposite of what we did to get it out. So we'll work the same thing. We'll just reconfigure uh, the tool here and essentially force it the other direction. So this will literally just be pushing this up into uh, the bracket down here. I'll get it set up here in a second. Just so you understand here again, so I got that off of there. As you can see, they don't put a lot of grease in. That's why you know you need to make sure and uh, put the grease stirred in before that. You see now she fits up there nice and tight against that. And you want to center this over that. And then what it does is this, the bottom of this allows for it to travel through there again as you press it back in. 
So now we're going to do the, the opposite way. We're going to put this in the top and essentially bust it up to the bottom and compress it back in uh, in the top. We'll use the other uh, piece here. There's another one similar to, to this guy here. I don't know what I just did with it. There it is. So this, of course, will go uh, in the top portion uh, to go ahead and fit that in there at that point. All right, well, another thing I've done here too is I, I went ahead and put the bottle jack underneath the, the control arm down here, um, mainly because I want to make sure that when I do put the pickle in there and, and pound that in to break that bottom uh, ball joint out, that it doesn't, the whole lower uh, A arm just doesn't drop. Um, it'll help in putting it back together too and uh, when you get, get them loosened up. So, so as you put that in there on that ball joint, you pound on the end of the pickle here. Uh, of course, it'll separate, and then that lower control arm may drop, uh, depending on what if there's any, you know, force here on the shock or anything that may push it down. So, um, so we'll get pounded. This one, uh, use the pickle on this one here. It really only took me a couple smacks on this one. I'm having a little bit more of a challenging time on the bottom one, but yeah, just wedged her in there, popped it a couple times. I tilted a nut here on the bottom, so the whole thing didn't drop. Uh, so I'll keep pounding on that bottom one until she separates. So once again, here we've got it set up uh, to get this off of here. So you got the, the block that goes underneath to stabilize. I have to use a pretty large one here. You can see there's a little gap on this side, but as long as it rides on the rim here so uh, it doesn't impede that downward motion, we should be good. I'll put the impact hammer on here and then we'll press it back out. And when we put it back in, I've seen some people online say, well, put this up the other way, upside down. You really don't have to. Uh, on this one, anyhow, we got the right size uh, and it's a solid top flat, uh, or the small round one will fit up against uh, that and allow the shaft to come through. You can just move this to the top and actually do the same thing, except you're gonna suck it back into it. And I'll, I'll set it up for that so you can see it also. All right, having just a little bit of difficulty, not bad. Uh, try the pneumatic on it uh, up here, having some trouble because every time I think the vibration would cause it to slip off the edge of the lip. Again, this is really kind of the wrong size. This, there's this one and the size smaller. Of course, the size smaller that comes with the kit is too small, so you got to try and get it to rest on that edge a little bit. So I'm just hand cranking it instead uh, with a breaker bar in hopes that you know she won't pop off and. And what was doing is coming up around the side of the uh, A-arm, so wasn't functioning very well with the pneumatic. Oh, another thing to consider, might try a little penetrating oil on there that I put on in here to, to help hopefully get it to pop. Looks to be doing pretty good. And I see some progress here. It's starting to slip down in there. Once it goes, it'll just drop too. It'll just kind of pop once it's loose because that's tapered. And it'll pop into the bottom there. Yay, it's going. I think she'll pop. At least it's going through.
she's getting super easy. So anyhow, keep doing this till she pops out. And it typically, like I said, a lot of times it'll just go pop, and when she loosen on the backside. So now here's the new one that's going to go in again. One of the things I also got to tell you is to take this boot off before you try to press it in, and then obviously remember to put it back on. So put it someplace where you see it, so you don't go reassembling it, then find out that you forgot to put the grease boot back on. Okay. Okay, here we are getting configured for reassembly and what I did again too is just put that on the bottom run that through point it in the direction you want your grease circ to fit inside of that I thought it must be good if I had an extra set of hands but I don't so I'll bear with me and we'll get this moved out of the way get that kind of started in there Take this cup, put it over the top. And then this one underneath. Oh. Okay. Okay, here's how I was telling you about you got her configured like this. You go ahead and just take your ball joint because that's a steel plate there. You can just set it on top of that like that. Again, I get a little. I got a little grease in there already. I got it pointed to the back here, so I can go ahead and get my uh, grease cert back in there. And on the top portion of this, you put that one. And then, of course, the metal plate here. You set that over the top. And everything's trying to push me out of the way, but I'm going to win. Snug that in there like that. And as you can see. She's all lined up at this point, and then you just crank her by hand, and then very slowly, like I say, you can crank that back in there, and it'll push it up from the bottom by cranking on the top. Instead of making all the noise, you can tell the compressor just got done. The new one's pressed right in. I'm uh, going to put on the snap ring in the groove here, uh, put the grease cert in, and then we're pretty much done. Just reassemble backwards of the way you took her apart. Hope this helps you. If you enjoyed my video and hopefully it helps you, if you just like me, please, that would be great. Thanks.